Well, hello there and welcome to the Impact is Young Man's podcast where we help young men become, grow, and live as disciples of Jesus and help them navigate what it means to be a Christian man in today's cultural moment. Today on the podcast, I've got a good friend of mine. His name is Kirby Steven, and he is an incredible guy who's seen a lot of transformation in his life. Not just his life, but in the life of others. Uh, and as you'll hear on the podcast over the years, and especially at the kind of age when he became uh, a husband to his wife, he actually began to really go on a journey of leadership development. And now he's helping others do the same. And he is a certified Maxwell leadership coach. He's a pastor. He's a dad to three busy kids and a great husband to his wife. And on today's podcast, we talk about a number of things. How can a young man grow? And where would he start if he was really struggling and wanting to change things in his life? Today on the podcast, we talked about having smart goals and the importance of making a decision and how nothing changes if you don't make a decision. For it to change. Honestly, this podcast was a real encouragement to me. All while we were talking, I was thinking about some areas in my life that it's time for me to make a decision. And I'm hoping for you, it does the same. And so all that and so much more on today's podcast. And so let's jump right in. Kirby, man, thanks so much for being here. It's nice to finally get a chance to have you on the podcast. So stoked that you're here, man. Well, thank you for inviting me, man. When I had your text, I said, I said yeah, just jump on it. Uh, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, that's great, man. And, you know, Kirby, you uh, are a busy guy. You're a dad of three kids, your husband, your um, pastor, uh, and you're a leadership coach. Did I summarize that well? Like, yeah. is that is that who yep. you are? What, what else you got going on? Or is that or is that, that that's pretty much well, it? Well, the one thing that I would add is I'm a fitness enthusiast. I love fitness. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, yeah. I'm, uh, I, I'm an aspiring fitness enthusiast <laughs> and so we'll <laughs> get it. there. We'll get there. Maybe I need to take you up sure. on some of your, your inspiration. You know, I was sure. thinking, I was actually chatting with uh, our director of operations here at the office, uh, Paul mm -hmm. Levine. And, uh, I said, Oh, I'm, I'm interviewing Kirby today. And he said, man, he's a live wire. And I think, you know, if there's one word that I would use to describe you, Kirby is passion. And, uh, and, and it. you got a lot of passion. You're, you're very excited about God and development, but what I love, love more than that about you, Kirby, and just mm -hmm. watching from a distance is that you actually sure. walk what you're talking. <laughs> you actually love it. do yeah. what you're talking about. And you know, in the Thank church, uh, there's a lot of talk around discipleship. There's a lot of talk mm -hmm. about helping people grow. Uh, but it often happens en masse in the sense that like people are in a big group and you have one person speaking to a big group, which I know you do. But you also right. spend a lot of time dealing with people one-on-one. -on -one. And right. you're actually doing it. And so what is that about? What is that about? So like you're saying, like um, seemingly I'm, I'm doing it. And yes, I, I am doing it. Like I, I meet right now five to 10 people a week. And this is, this is kind of my average that I do want to maintain because, you know, it keeps me busy, keeps me on my toe, keeps me studying. Uh, and I do want to say this. I do want to add uh, because something is particular about me is because I am public about it. So I do want to give grace to a lot of pastors that I know who are right. doing the same, um, but they're just not loud about it. And and for me, I think that should um, be different. You know, I think I think we should be uh, be loud about what we are doing for the Lord. I'm very adamant about this. The reason why you say that is because you see it. Right. That's the right. reason why you're inspired is because you see it. The reason why people will be inspired is because now that allowed me to be in a in a podcast and and inspire more people. Right. right. Is because I, I'm 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 posting it and I'm not doing it for my for my own fame or anything. But to say, hey, in the midst of the sea of things people post, what are the what is what is about the kingdom of God that is being publicized? And for me, this is I'm on a mission to tell about the world about what God is doing. You know, there's so many wreck out there. You know, there's so many wrong negative stuff. People post their cars, their vacation, their marriages, right. their weddings, their barbecues, which is all great. I do the same thing. <laughs> but but I also do want to post uh multiple times what God is doing in my 
in my surroundings, you know, and how God is using me to bring life. But there's other pastors. Some of my colleagues in my district, in my city, are meeting. Sometimes I'm going to a Tim Hortons or a coffee shop, and I meet my colleague from another church meeting another young adult or a youth, or they have a coffee with somebody, some of their members. So it's happening. It's just I'm the one loud about it. Yeah, and I, I I appreciate your humility in that, Kirby, right. but I also, right. I was a pastor for a long time, and I right. know that it's often easy for uh, Christians and pastors to just kind of take a pass on actual life-on-life life discipleship. It's true. And, and I agree uh, and as well. Saying, you know, and so a lot of people, it is happening, and there's a lot of pastors and leaders doing a lot of good stuff, and right. I, I know many, but there's, there's, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that if you were to ask them, who are you actively discipling? They it's would true. have a hard time listing a name of maybe people other than their kids, right? Uh, That's and true. So I, I just agree. like tell me a little bit about what happens, and and just to uh, to make sure people catch what's happening here. You are meeting with youth and young adults one on one, and you get together for a yep. coffee. What does that yep. half an hour hour look like? Like what 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 is it? What actually happens? Yeah, so I meet people from 30 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on the situation, depending on how much they want to talk and how much time do I have as well. And so what happened is that they come on a Sunday morning, uh, they either knew, most of the times they, they knew, and they uh, they come and say, hey, I'm, I'm looking for a church and I'm reaching out and I'm browsing churches. And, and uh, me, one of my task that i love to do by the way it's more than just a task but I, I, one of the things i do is like i run after new faces and and i say hey is it your first time here blah 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 and i'm doing my little speech and i said listen i'm inviting you out for young adults and one of the things that i do is i go for coffee one-on-one to see where i can be of value to you as a pastor here uh would you like that and and they say yeah i would i would love to connect you know i just get to know more about you your church and what you're doing and then most of the times it starts like that and so, and then we set up a time, we go for coffee and on coffee, it's, I call it the, um, the, uh, let's meet, uh, meet. So meet is M E E T and, uh, how uh, and it's kind of an algorithm, kind of an algorithm, uh, freak here. I love algorithms. And, and, uh, and so it says it's motivate, encourage, empower, and teach. So every time I go see someone, I, I do one of those four or all four, depending on the person. So we go and we connect and we exchange our name. Hey, this is Kirby here. What's your name? And let tell, tell me more about you. And then from there, we just jump on. And when they tell me about themselves, there's topics that are raised. There's so many things. I say, hey, and at the end, I, 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 and my goal is to keep continue meeting, right? I do want wow. to continue meeting. So at the end, I say, hey, you spoke about this, 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 and that. Would you like to continue our conversation on this, this, and this topic? And if they say yes, well, then the rest is history. Wow. Yeah, no, it's interesting, mm-hmm. man. And I guess I guess for me, uh, and, and I think about, you know, obviously being in practice and um, being focused on men in particular. Right. Uh, what, what are you seeing amongst young men that you're meeting with? Are they hungry right. for more of God? Are they seeking? Are they kind of trying to sort out this whole masculinity thing? Like, I'm just curious right. your observations because you meet with a lot of people. You're encouraging, you're yep. motivating. What, what's what's right. kind of, what are, what are you seeing out there with, with young men in particular? In young men is all of the above. Everything you mentioned is all of the above. And especially now in the society that we're currently living in, uh, the thing about masculinity is huge. Like uh, to be a man. And I, ca- I got to say this, just to be an adult, you know, just to be an adult. I meet with lots of young men who are 18, 19, 25, 28 years old. I'm 35 myself. And and uh, the COVID did a number on all those yeah. young men. A young man is already hard enough for them to to kind of put two t- sentences together to have a, like a really great conversation with somebody, especially uh, the other gender. Uh, but just to ma- entertain a conversation, it's it's very difficult. And some of them were 16, 17 when COVID started, and then uh, COVID is over. They're eighteen. They're 19 years old and now they become an adult. They're not youth anymore, but they have still have this mind of, right. of, of teenage and, and they are closed in, in their mind. So the desire is there to grow. They just don't know how to do it. Uh, they want to, they, they have a hunger for the Lord. Uh, they just need to be told. You know, how, how to go about that? You know, like they don't, people, most of our young adults, young men don't read. 
Yeah. You know, but they spend a lot of time in front of a screen listening to all types of other masculine male, right? Except the one man we should learn from, right? Yeah. And, and then we talk about Jesus over here. Right, mm -hmm. but they listen to Andrew Tate. They listen to to the Red Pill movement. They listen to the Red Pill, Blue Pill, all type of pills, you know, and all type of YouTubes. And I, and I and I and I told them, listen, I know all these men, you know, I I listening to this man, but give a chance to the man that came and died for you and tell you how to be a man according to God's word. And when I say that, something clicked because nobody telling them that, right? Yeah. Nobody's telling them the bible has everything about manhood that you need you know just get there and, and read it with it if you want to be masculine well le read the bible with a masculine glasses on right and you'll see everything you need to do and so yeah, i started to do so that good. myself like a few years ago i started to do this myself you know i got married eight years ago and i wanted to be a man to my wife you know like i say listen babe like the man you got in 2016 is not going to be the man in, in you know that you married I, i'll tell you that okay. right because the man she married she said yes to a guy who wasn't complete <laughs> okay <laughs> let's be honest yeah I, I i could be i could go in details you and i could say the same and 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 uh and i start studying the bible especially the new testament but a lot with the old testament as well um about you know like with with i like read the bible with the man's eye right and so and i said wow like if if you, if you, and I know I'm taking a little bit here, but it's very important. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. If we, why you're here. if if we, yeah, <laughs> I love it. If we look at our lives, okay, and we look at the 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 the, the requirement that God is asking us as men to live, and 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 if you're married, it's even worse, okay, uh, uh, as the requirement to live life as a man, mm -hmm. as a leader. As a husband, I'm telling you, I was reading it and I was shaking. I was like, God, I have so much work to do, mm -hmm. so much work. And when I look at the men that are talking on social media, they don't have a clue about what they're talking about, yeah. right? Most men that are talking that, 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 that are the loudest, okay, are, don't, don't have a stable woman. I've not been in a stable marriage. Most of them do not have kids. And most of them are on their own, yeah. right? So yeah, they are in the funny. forest by themselves. It's funny you actually say, you know, the ones that are the loudest. I've heard a saying yeah. one time, Kirby, that said, uh, it's kind of like swimming at the public pool, right? The, 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 right? the loudest area is the shallow end, right? It's like the right. guys that have a lot to say haven't actually done a lot of the work, <laughs> the right. deep work. It's true. Right? And so it's the shallow end. But it's interesting, you know, right. Kirby, uh, I want to ask you a little bit, you talked a little bit about uh, just now, about when you were first married, you you know, there was a lot to work on. And are you right. finding it as you're turning 35 right now? I'm just turning 33, right. I think it is. Right. I feel like I, I feel like I'm almost experienced in the past couple of years. Maybe this is just what happens when you have kids. I mean, I feel like I'm experiencing another puberty, like, <laughs> like, yes. a, like, a, like a maturing that's happening that yes. like, I'm like, you know, I, I, th I think differently. I retain information differently. I'm, right. uh, it's almost like another coming of age where it feels like, yeah, sure. When you turn 18, you become a man, but like, yeah. I feel like there's something that happens in that, that younger thirties that actually yeah. there's, a, there's like, a, um, and maybe it's, maybe it is becoming married and getting kids and those types of things. But have yeah. you experienced that as well, where you feel like in the past couple of years or, or has this been a, a yeah. long journey for you? I'm just curious. It is a long journey, but yeah. you are right. There's a threshold that happened when you reach 30. Um, and I, and I didn't feel it first. It's actually people that made me feel different when I reached 30. I remember when I was, uh, I was pastoring in Brentford. Okay. So I, I landed in Brentford in, I was 27 and I stayed there four years. Okay. So I was like there 26, 27 years old, 28, 29 years old. Okay. Now listen to this. There's people that never acknowledged me. And I was, listen, I was married. I had my kids, uh, starting to have kids. I was a man. I was growing and I was 29, 28. Okay, there's people who've never really acknowledged me or disrespected me, say hi and all that. But the moment I turned 30, I there's a whole new world of people who start 
to call me and to want to reach out to me. And I'm talking about 30 years old, week one. Okay, like the next Sunday I turn 30, some people say, hey, Pastor Gabriel, we should go for coffee. <laughs> you know? We should go for t- coffee. I would like to talk to you about stuff. And, th- and those people were like 31, 32, 33, 34. That's funny. And, and just because I turned 30, something happened. Uh, and they, they start to talk to me in a different way. Now, this is external. It, internally as well. The moment I turned 30, I started to see the world differently. Yeah. And it happens to me when I turn 20 as well, right? When I turn 20, 25, the mid, mid 20s. So all those things, I'm 35, some, the same shift happened as well, right? At 35 years old, I had a whole shift. Now I'm going 36 in December and I've, I'm thinking about the next five years, I'm going to get 40. I can't lose time. You see what I'm saying? So I'm everything now is like exponential five. It must be faster. Yeah. I need to learn. I need to be really intentional. So what you're going through is very important and it needs to be embraced because your 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 timer in your brain is telling you, hey, you have 10 years to establish yourself, to excel, to you, you to to really find your direction and go to it kids you have 10 years you know to really sponge them with your wisdom Mm -hmm. with your you know knowledge it's 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 all there now i love that kirby man and one thing i love about you is that you've been on a kind of a journey yourself when it comes to leadership development and you know you've been recently certified with maxwell leadership right is that correct yes Yep, and and yep, so that's August. super exciting. And so tell me a little bit about mm-hmm. where this passion for training, for meeting, for connecting, for helping right. people accomplish their goals, where did this come from? Is it something you've always had or or, or did, yeah, no. where did it come from? It's actually something that I've always wanted, but I never had. Um, right. When I, my dad became a pastor when I was 14 years old. And at 15 years old, he told me, okay, now you're the pastor of the youth. And I was like, what? I'm 15. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want me to do, right? So like, like all the youth and young adults that I'm, that I'm leading and pastoring, I never had a youth pastor in my life, right? right? So I had to learn by doing, by failing, and by learning to develop myself now. I'm not going to lie. My dad is my mentor, my coach. He's my hero. He's the one that you like throw me to the lions and, 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 you know, but stead, stead, he stayed by the cage to, for me to not be eaten. Right. But he, he told me go and figure it out. And so this is where un, unintentionally started to grow and, and focus on personal development. But really what happened, my turning point, and again, I repeat myself a little bit is when I got married, <laughs> You know, when I got married is where everything hit it for me, hit for me. Right. Because before before taking that charge of commitment and responsibility, I was very negligent. I was very negligent. I was with money, with my person, with my um with my giftings. I was very spontaneous, following the flow, crashed all the time. And so I never really got anywhere. School wasn't great for me. I've, after high school nothing academically unsuccessful uh business wise you know successful I, I was all over the place and so when i got married i said i didn't want i didn't want to bring that pattern into my marriage and and uh so i said no i need to show you an example to my wife and and first to myself so i need to lead myself i need to lead myself so yeah. i can lead my wife and my future family and this is where it all started jordan is eight years ago I developed a passion for personal development and that was for me to say, okay, I need growth. I need growth. Mm -hmm. And so I started to read books, something that I didn't do before. You know, I started to research mentorship and all that. And this is where I landed on John Maxwell and John Maxwell, you know, from his books, his podcasts, his videos became my greatest mentor to grow my leadership. I became a full-time pastor at the same time, six months wow. after marriage. I moved from Montreal to Ontario, became a full-time pastor, something that I never experienced before. And so I'm going to lead all those people. I'm going to be full-time as a pastor. They're going to see me as a person that I'm not. <laughs> you know. So I really needed growth fast and very intentional. So this eight-year process for me to be certified, as I took, I took seven years. It took seven years for me to be certified today. And wow. uh, and today I'm a speaker. I'm a coach. I'm a trainer with the Maxwell team, and uh, I, and, and 
I'm vowing to bring personal development and leadership. I've been doing this for the past five years intentionally, but not being certified, just added value to myself, more knowledge and curriculums and and I have the certification to teach some of this stuff as well. So kind of exponentially grow this area. Yeah. And what, what I love about that is, you know, um, I think we all know uh, young men like you described, uh, negligent, mm-hmm. right? With their money. Yes. I think back to myself, uh, even yeah. there's still parts of me that I'm praying, Lord, refine me <laughs> in these areas. Yeah, absolutely. Right? absolutely. Um, but what I love about your story, Kirby, is that it says that change is possible. And so absolutely. if you if you could, what's the biggest difference between Kirby at 34 and Kirby when he was first married? What would you say is the biggest difference? Intentionality. That's my favorite yeah. word. You're going to hear me say it all the time. Intention. I became intentional. Yeah. I became intentional and took control of the boat that I was that was called to yeah. to uh, to rather to to drive. Bro, yeah. Right. Wow. Uh, so I became intentional with the direction that I wanted to 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 go. I became intentional with the family that I wanted to raise. I became intentional with the pastor I wanted to become. I, w- I became intentional with the future that I was seeing from me and what a lot of people spoke over my life. So I said, okay, right. you know what? Let me be intentional on becoming the man that call has got me to be. I don't know where I'm going to end up, but at least this is the direction I w- and I'm choosing to take and I'm taking it. And so, so intentionality for all men uh, is going to be a game changer. And then intentionality will bring you to become, to become consistent and disciplined. And then that will bring you to success. I love that. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I've tried uh, with some of this intentionality stuff. And it's hard for me a little bit because, <laughs> um, you know, some of the voices even that you've mentioned and some of these influencers online are like, you know, yeah. wake up at 530 and have a cold shower and then, like, right, right. you know, walk across glass. And, like, I'm, they don't actually say that, but you know <laughs> what I'm saying. It's like, And I'm just right, like, right. that's just not – that's just not – I'm not going to be, I right. hate cold showers. I like, and so right. I'm just curious, what does intentionality actually look like for you, Kirby? And, and uh, you know, I don't think we're intending on speaking on this, but talk to me a little bit about what right. a young man that's wanting to bring change about in his life, what does intentionality start to look like? Yeah, and I, and I agree with you. We will get bombarded with all type of stuff. The 5 a.m. club, you know, the, 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 the cold showers, people buying all those, those, those cold baths right now, which is all great. <laughs> you know, like, you know, it's the, everything you can, is trendy until, until, until it runs you over, right? I mean, right. It's, it's, that's the way it is. But for you to be intentional, and I say that to every young man that I see, every person that I see, is make a decision. Make a decision mm-hmm. and stick to it. The the start of intentionality start with a decision. I'm deciding to be to be wise with my money. Okay, so if you make a decision, I decide today to not skip a payment, right? And so mm-hmm. if you decide to do that, and some people make a decision at the age of thirty. Okay, I'm, I'm telling you, it's like it's it's there's no age for intention to become intentional. Make a decision and then stick to it, and don't do everything at the same time. Take yeah, one thing gonna, and decide. I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask you yeah. that. Yeah. Do you recommend? Take one thing and decide what you want to be, what you want to do with that, and then start working on it. Be intentional with that. And once you get traction, take another one, add to it, make a decision. I love and that. Now, and that's the start. Yeah, because I think for me, uh, what I've done in the past is like, okay, I'm going to start waking up at 5 a.m., read my Bible, mm-hmm. make a good breakfast go for a walk before the kids are awake. And then it's like 10 days right. later, I'm like, yeah, this is not working. <laughs> right, right. And, and you know, final, do it in, in, with, with your lifestyle, right? right. Waking up at 5 a.m. doesn't work for me at no. all. Like you can, you can t- see me being confident, doing fitness and all those beautiful things. 5 a.m. is too early for me. I can't yeah. do it, right? I, for me, my time is 545, 6. That's my time. It's okay. I, I, and I got to learn myself. Okay. I think six o'clock is a great time for me. This I decide from now on to wake up every morning at six o'clock. And before even adding, read my Bible, make your breakfast. No, I just want to wake up. <laughs> right. You know, for the first for the first 30 days, I want to wake up at six. And then things will move along from there. You'll create the habit and you add to it, right? And, uh, and some, some people can. Listen, some people can in the, in the very first day do waking up, 
take right. breakfast, go to the gym, read your Bible, and do all those things. But take one action, be good at it, add to it halfway, and then you'll you'll get traction like this. For me, for me, slow is best. Yeah. You know, progressive is better. You can you can be like the killing in one night if you want to cold turkey but life 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 like this time you know there's hope take one one breath at a time yeah i'm loving this because i didn't realize i was gonna get a free coaching call out of this podcast today yeah that's all for free so I, yeah. I you. I, i'm getting all <laughs> this it. for free no it's <laughs> great good. man that, that's fantastic and i think that's such a good word for young men because i think there are a lot right. of young men that are stuck right and maybe like their hat they have habits you know we talk about habits a lot around sure. here and practice and spending habits, uh, relational habits, um, just even bad hobby habits when it comes to, um, you know, maybe they're spending too much time gaming or they're spending too much time, you know, doing whatever. Uh, right. But they don't need to feel that the, the, the messaging that they see oftentimes with media is to change everything at once. And so this is a good reminder to oh, young no. guys to say, hey, you don't need to, right. you don't need to actually do all of that. Just focus on one key habit what's right. what would you say some people would say like waking up early is a good first key habit and of course it's different for everybody but what's one right. key intentionality thing you think for a young man is, is is a good starting point or would you say it really depends on on the guy it really depends on the guy for real and and the life you're living so for example i'm a gamer myself here i'm a gamer i've been know, a gamer all my that. life yeah cool oh yeah i'm a big time what, gamer I what's your go-to game video. assassin's creed is for now i'm like big on As on ac you know, okay. Assassin's Creed. Right now, I, I like I like all the solo games. Uh, okay. Every um, you know, real world topic. I love all those things. I didn't play video games for a while. My my daughter crushed my games recently. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's but not it talk about it. Xbox, it was an old Xbox One, okay. so I, I I'm I'm okay. over it. <laughs> but um, so but you know, like one example, you know, the the generation of young men that we have play video games a lot right yeah. and and especially right now the current 18 to 25 they all play video game even the 30 year old i would say you know play a lot of video games and and i would say to them look so pastor Kirby, listen you know i've been playing video games like eight hours a day in covid now you're telling me to stop i'm not telling you to stop i'm telling you to reduce your amount of time you spend playing video games right you used to yeah. do eight do five next time Try to do five. Yeah. Now you do five. Now what you do, what you do, now decide what you want to do with those three hours that you sacrificed. You see? Mm -hmm. And it's all about, you know, you know, progressing. You know, the in January, you play eight hours a day. How if you do this in, in June, you'll be you'll be fine with one, two hours a day. Because yeah. you will have slowly replaced those times. It's not gonna be cold turkey, you know, taking rubbing you from the online taking the remote out of your out of your hand some guys need that just a slap in the face just get up but uh other people this need no just you are capable just reduce those time reduce yeah. reduce reduce and then you will find it that's how i did it for myself you know wow. and wow. those times i've been replacing with my daughters with my kids with my wife it's not like i'm not doing anything in those three hours i'm not just sitting idle because i don't just want to stay for five hours <laughs> yeah. no you 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 yeah. those three hours decide what you want to do with that and work on something is there a book you want to read finish is there a, a business idea you had but the game was a distraction it w did you want to focus on your health and fitness well Take those two hours you sacrifice from those games and do some push-ups, do some sit-ups. Right. You know, do something that will help you uh, fill those gaps that usually you would have spent playing video games. No, it's good. That's and, one example. Know, this this word deciding keeps coming up, and honestly, it's uh, I've All I've read time. a lot of leadership stuff, but this idea of deciding is very powerful. Deciding. I'm curious, <laughs> uh, Kirby, when people when a young man decides for himself what he wants his life to look like in different spheres right how specific do you, does he have to be about this is like being specific important or can he say like i want to be a self-controlled guy or should he say to himself i want to be a guy that only plays video games an hour a day mm -hmm. like does yeah, specific, this being specific is that important i think so right and you know, i'm big on goal setting and the one thing about goal setting is that you have to be specific right it's right. okay Talk i to want to that. make yeah so there's there's a very popular uh concept when it comes to goal setting called the smart goal 
right? And the small goal is telling you S is be specific, M that is measurable. I mean, you can't you you know when you when you reach it. Okay, A is attainable. It means it's it's real. It's realistic. It's not some crazy goal that you have that is unattainable, right? Um, R is relevant. It means it connects with you, right? Emotionally, right. it connects with your lifestyle. And T, which um, and T, which is a the most important one, is time bound. It means there's a deadline, right? It means you give mm. you you give you give yourself a time uh, that you bound yourself to that that by this time my goal will look like this. Okay, so an example of a smart goal would be, okay, I want to lose weight. That's a general declaration, right? But to make it specific is I want to lose 40 pounds in the next three months by going to the gym three times in a week, you know, and by June, in by June, the end of June for summer, I will have lost 40 pounds. And this is how it's going to look right. like. I'm going to go from size 45 to size 34. Example. So now yeah. you have a plan, you have a goal, it's specific, you know, it connects with you, it's measurable, it's attainable, it's not impossible, right? It relates with you because we're talking about your health, we're talking about your fitness, you're just going to get better and you are motivated because you have a time at the end that by summer so I can go to the beach and get my next wife, hey, I'm going to have the apps for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> there you go. type of thing, there you right? Go. No, that's good. And so, so yeah, that, so but being specific is a, is a big thing. Mm -hmm. It starts with that decision yep. and being specific. I, I think being specific. You know, I'm thinking about the many young men that maybe may listen to this and may feel prompted and maybe there's an area of right languishing or something they're, they're struggling with. And, and, and the, the challenge that I'm hearing from you, Kirby, and I hope they hear is that it's time yeah. to just make a decision and a specific yeah. decision, set a specific, specific goal one. around one right. thing. And, and, and thing. How, have, how have these smart goals and making decisions changed your life? It sounds like you've been able to cut back on the amount yeah. of time you're playing video games. What, what other areas has this manifested in your life? Oh, reading my Bible, uh, spending, spending time with people that I love, like, appreciate, um, you know, reading some books that, uh, I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't reading before. Right. Um, I, I wanted to be, I wanted to, uh, be able to reach 10 persons a week. I didn't start like that. I started with one, you know, and that one, uh, give me practice that one give me, uh, you know, good and failures. Right. And that person referred me to another person and then I spent two, three. So <laughs> I had a goal of meeting 10 person, 10 person a week. Now I'm meeting 10 person a week, you know, now I'm making a goal of not surpassing that because it's going to be too much. <laughs> <laughs> I know? was gonna say, but, yeah, yeah any more than that, and you'll be, uh, you'll no, just live about, at the coffee that's shop. Not, yeah, that's not gonna be good. They, they know me too well over there, and so, uh, so yeah, so yeah, making a goal has impacted my life. You know, totally, totally rocked my life, and uh, it impacted my faith too. You know, I want to be, I, I wanted to preach better. You know, I be a big, a better communicator. Right, my link. I speak French originally, so I had a goal to really be articulate when it comes to English. So I wanted to learn new words, um, you know, so I don't, I want to say, um, less, so I'll be, be more confident. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Right? Yeah. And it, it's, it's all there. And even that's still progressing. My language is getting better every time. My vocabulary is changing, is growing, you know, by doing videos that I do on, on social media, I get better every video and all those goals is my lifeline, my friend. Without a goal, wow. there's death. Wow. I'm curious, uh, Kirby, how many goals do you have right now that you can think of that you have in front of you? Look, do you have 10 plus or 20 plus or what does that look like? Oh my. So I have, I have four general uh, categories of goal and, and I call it the four F. Okay. So the first one is faith. The first, the second one mm -hmm. is family. The other, uh, the, the, uh, the third one is finance. And the last one is fitness. So in all, in those four categories, I have a list of goals for each categories. So I have goals for my faith. I have goals for my family. I have goals for my own personal finance or my family finance. And I have goals for my fitness. Now, I, I cannot tell right now on the top of my head um, no, 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 how many good. goals I have. But but I, I'm I, on average, I may have five goal, main goals that I'm working on for each, right? Wow. You know, and so I could say for four, we can say 20 right now, right? Uh, no, more or less. I could, you know, I didn't count them, but. 
Wow. And and just curious, who keeps you accountable to these? Is it just Kirby? Or like what role does accountability play in all this? And you know, Kirby, I'm sorry, this I'm just finding this fascinating because I see so many young men that have been in your shoes that are looking to actually like level up in their life and leadership right. and they're just spinning level their up. tires. And so he, I got a guy on the call that has done it <laughs> and so and still working oh, on it. Yeah, that's awesome. And so, or it's still uh, working and, on it. Yeah, it's still working on yeah. it. Yeah. And so talk to me, like, who keeps you accountable to this? Is it just you? I know it seems like you and your wife are really close and sidekicks and are working on your yep. own kind of, you know, development. Right. But do you have a crew around you that's helping you with this? Or what role does kind of your own resilience play in this? So for my for my faith, I have a few people. I have I have a friend in Montreal. Uh, we don't connect much to right now, but we used to connect a lot. And anytime he's available, he follows me online everything that i do and uh so i have uh on faith i have a friend he's a pastor as well and whenever i need he needs to recalibrate me he's, he's there my current pastor at my church i connect with him and he keeps me accountable for the things that i do for ministry and my own personal faith um and and uh, so when it comes to my family my wife she's my most accountability of course she calls me out when i'm lazy you know <laughs> when i spend two three days you know not focusing she's like what are you doing? You keep your phone. You need to make a video. Remember, you know, that's why you're not on the bed right now. You're downstairs making a video. And so she she uh, she keeps me accountable very much. I, I I try to keep myself accountable, you know, on my own. This is a skill that I developed to keep myself accountable. And uh, and um and I think self-motivation is very powerful when nobody is around you. So you have mm. to be able to self-motivate. Um, uh, when it comes to my finance, well, again, my wife, I don't have, I don't personally have someone that keeps me accountable for my wife, uh, for my finance. But when it comes to my, the business that I'm working on, Kirby Steven Leadership, I do have new friends that I made at yeah. the certification conference that I made that are now sending me emails and calling me and say, Hey, where are you at? What are you doing? And, and so that kind of accountability. Cool. And so in my fitness, well, Everyone at the gym is my accountability. I, I I like to go to a place where, you know, you stay consistent and they know you, you know, when when I'm not there for a while, say, hey, where are you? Are you traveling? Or we did, I didn't see you at the gym for a little bit. So there's that. Right. No, and so do you think accountability is key in accomplishing these smart goals and these, you know, absolutely. developing as a man? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, uh, John Maxwell said once, once that a dream not shared uh, will never be attained. So wow. you you have you have to you have to share your dream with somebody, uh, and once it's out there, then you you have no choice but to accomplish it. But if you're not gonna accomplish it, don't talk about it. Wow! Oh, this is great, man. Listen, I'm curious if right. uh, in the last ten minutes or so here, um, I want you to put on your 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 coach hat for a second. You've been doing a lot of that this this call, but right, right, right. Uh, let's just think of a, a young man who's struggling. What encouragement would you have for him? To like he's just he comes to you and he says Kirby I'm just not satisfied with where I'm at right now in my life. What would right. you say to him? Well, I would I would actually ask him well where you're at right now, right? And and put him on the spot right right there and then because you are somewhere, you just don't mm -hmm. like where you are and you have to admit where you are. If you're at the bottom, well, tell it to me. Okay, hey, listen, Kirby, man, I'm at the bottom. I've, I'm struggling with, with that addiction and that addiction. And I know for the past six months, you know, you know, I haven't been coming to church. You know, I haven't been praying. I've been reading my Bible. You know, I have a girlfriend and things are not being good with her or I'm with my family and I'm not connecting. And then, uh, and, but man, I, something, you know, told me to reach out. And so I'm here. And so, yeah, this, this is where I'm at. See, uh, and right, right there and there, we can start. We can start work. And I think that's such a key part of starting the work because I yeah. heard one speaker once say, um, "What's not spoken can't be broken." Right, and like you've got to be right. willing to actually say out loud, "Yeah, wh what's going yeah. on." And it's right. amazing the freedom that comes when the lights are turned on and you can you lay it mm -hmm. out in front of someone for them all to see it yeah. all, and they right. don't shame you or embarrass you. Uh, they just listen and they say, okay, we can go from here. But as long as things are concealed, uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's hard to work with that. And so I would just say to the young you, man listening, you got to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. It, listen, and this is a God's principle. This is a biblical yeah. principle. Bible says, confess, mm -hmm. come 
and confess. Do you think God don't know what mm -hmm. you've been doing? <laughs> you think God doesn't see what you've been watching? You know, and listen, God sees all that, right? But he, he want you to come and to confess, to tell him what's going on, to tell him what you need help on, to tell him. You know, this when I preach about miracles and when Jesus go around doing miracles, sometimes, and sometimes I'm offend, offending people when I say this, Jesus asks some stupid question, you know? <laughs> And one of those questions that he asked, especially with blind people, <laughs> okay, like, like, come on, and, and beggars. Jesus is like, what do you want me to do for you? It was like, come on, what? You know, the man comes to you. You clearly see what's going on. But then Jesus says, no, 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 no. I'm here, yes. I can do a lot of stuff for you. But what do you want me to do, right? And then the, the blind man is like, well, Lord, I want to see right so and then Jesus did what he just touched his eyes see right he could have given him a, a, an opportunity he could have given him new clothes he could have given him food to eat his baby's been begging on his life he could have done re reunited with his parents because he's been ostracized he could have done oh, oh no i'm telling you i'm doing what you've asked me to do what you've confessed you see what I'm saying? So uh, uh, you come to a mentor, you come to a coach, you come to listen to this podcast. What do you want done? Right. What do you want done? So you have to be aware of who you of where you are and admit, confess, and then we can start working. Even Jesus is stuck if you don't say anything. Yeah. And I think too, I, I, I that's so good. I, I think a lot of guys feels like, well, I can't share this because I'm either the only one or I'll be judged. And honestly, that is just such a lie from the pit of hell. Like it's a lie from the pit of hell. I don't. I honestly can't. I, maybe people have had bad experiences where they've shared vulnerably, but but right. most pastors and men that I know that are seeking to bring help and 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 um, healing to young men's lives, they're just longing for young men to be honest. Like, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And so, if if you're a young man listening, and and you've got a good man in front, you know, a good mentor, or maybe you don't, I, I guarantee you that we can help connect you with someone that will not, yes, uh, be shocked by anything you have to say. I always used to yeah. say to students when I work with them, nothing you say will surprise me, and it's likely right. as a man you're struggling right. with things that either I have personally struggled with or walked with people right. that have struggled with it. And, uh, right. and when people say things and they see that you're not shocked or judging, or it's like, it's like, Oh, okay. There, is, this is a safe space to kind of get some work done. And so that's, Absolutely. that's a f good first step Kirby mm -hmm. to just be honest about where you're at. That's so yeah. important. Wow. What, what would be the next thing? I'm curious. And this, so they've, they've said, <laughs> okay, this is where I'm at. Um, okay. Oh man, I'm giving away all your stuff for free here, Kirby. You're gonna have to forgive me. What's it's the, all what's right. The, it's what, all right. It's what, what, what's the it. what would you encourage them to take some time and reflect as to kind of where they're headed? They've they've did. How does it go? So after awareness is writing it down. I said, okay, now that you spoke about it, now write it down. Because if you don't write it down, so writing it down like free you from holding it in your head. Right, mm. holding it in the uh, the the guilt of, that I'm not good enough, I'm messed up or whatever. No, put it out of your head, put it on paper, and then what 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 I would do with you is that whatever you wrote down, then we're gonna start working on one at a time. Mm. Right now, and the question is, what is the most painful thing that if it you would it would be gone now, your life would change. Is it your addiction? Is it your wow. connection with your parents? Is it, what is it? It's like, well, you know what? I think that if I stop doing this, it will allow me to be free from all those, the other things uh, faster. Let's work on that. Wow. No, that's great, man. I, I Kirby, I've, uh, I'm so impressed with your heart to see transformation come to people's lives. And I love just it. the story, man, that you've had of, of God working in your own life is, is super inspiring to me. Uh, even, you, you know, like, it. like we had talked about, there's, there's still areas that of my life that oh, I'm yeah. praying God would get a, get a hang of and, and, and deal with. But if, if I, if I don't make a decision, why should I expect mm. anything to change? And if That's young right. men listening don't make a decision, like a decision, not like maybe yeah. could be, you know, no. a non-committal. That's not going to change anything. No. 
Yeah, I'm just thinking about that, man. I'm I, I'm thinking about my own mm-hmm. life. This has been a kind of a That's transformative good. call in many ways. So, Kirby, listen, yeah. man. I just want to thank you for taking time to come on here. Uh, thank you for inviting you, brother. me. Appreciate where, it. Where, where can people find more about what you're doing? And kind of, I would love. Yeah. Hey, listen, if you're a young man or a young person or someone that needs just some like some coaching, uh, do you coach all sorts of issues and situations, or is it just business related? Tell people a little bit about what you do, and uh, yeah. and where people can find you. So you can find me in kirbycoaching.com. So kirbycoaching.com, this is where you're going to find everything that, that I do, everything that I offer for businesses, for individuals as well. I do in a lot of individuals, um, it, per, personally in the faith, of course, because this is where my full-time uh, pastoring is. But outside of faith, I help people in you know uh, all those personal development and leadership coaching. Leadership growth. Now, leadership is everything. It influences you and it influences somebody else. And if you if you want to grow in that area, well, I'm 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 pleased to be your man to help you talk to you and be real with you in in that area. So KirbyCoaching.com. You can also find me on on Instagram with my name Kirby Steven or Kirby Leadership. That's my uh, my coaching account Kirby Leadership. Or connect with Jordan. He has my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got it today. With, you can so. connect. Yeah, you got my phone okay. number. You can say, "Hey, I want to, I want to talk to this guy." You know, and and I would love to help everybody. I can meet on Zoom if you are in the kind of Sonia Lampton, London area. We can see in person. Uh, I would love in person, but uh, especially if you're far, well, I'll, I'll be happy to talk to you. Like I'm talking with Jordan right now via via camera. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thank you, Kirby, man. And I have a feeling this is not going to be your last time uh, on camera for here us here at Impact This. And so I would love I'm to sure come people back. Will, definitely, people will see more of you. Yeah, that's good. Awesome, thank you so man. much for inviting me. Thanks, Kirby.